With the prospects of Subaru giving us an STI not looking very likely in the near future, WX owners like myself are putting all our hopes and dreams into two trims, the TR for 2024 and the TS for 2025. We've been begging and pleading with Subaru to give us a more dynamic sedan that is more responsive and also addresses all the weak points for this generation and platform. The big weak point is the brakes. Well, with the TR, we have the Brembos. Also, we want a car that handles better, maybe is more track focused. And when you take a look at what Subaru did to this car, at least on paper, it seems as though we have a remedy. But is that enough? In today's video, we're gonna find out. We're gonna take a good long look at the exterior, the interior, and definitely take it out for a test drive and see why maybe the TR is the way to go or possibly you should wait for the TS. Now, before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for letting me come down here to check out the TR. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. So as usual, let's begin with pricing. For 2024 with the TR, you're looking at a starting cost of just below $42,000. Now this is not the top trim for the model year, that's still the GT. And with the GT, you can only receive Subaru's SBT or CVT, whereas with the TR, you only get the six-speed manual, the way it should be for a car in this segment. Now, with the TR, you get some goodies, not only aesthetically speaking, but also mechanically, that sets this trim apart from the base, the premium, and limited. And it starts off with the side profile. You are gonna notice the 19-inch alloy wheels, and also the Brembo brakes. That's right, six piston calipers up front and two piston calipers in the rear. And they've also changed the rotors and brake pads for this trim, giving you better stopping power. We're gonna find out if that is the case once we take it out for a quick test drive. But I will say the Brembos alone changes up the exterior of this car. It feels as though that this was the missing piece to the design. And also I think that out of a WRX, you want to see those Brembos. You want to see some red calipers or other color contrasting accents for the exterior that we just didn't get for 22 or 23. Also the 19 inch alloy wheels, they will create a bit more road noise and a bit more harshness to the on-road driving experience. But let's remember, this is a sports sedan after all. So you expect that regardless of any car in this market. Now I do think though that if you do want to prioritize some sense of comfort, you're gonna to wanna to go with the premium or limited with the 18s or possibly even the base with the 17s. But the price gap between the base and the TR is quite wide. Now, when you take a look up front in regards to the aesthetics, nothing too different here at all. You will have steering responsive LED headlights and LED turn signal indicators to go along with LED fog lights. Now, the cladding is still there and you also have the gloss gray front grille. I would have liked to have seen something a little different for the front fascia, maybe even Subaru Sport Grille for the VB generation. That would have gone a long way. But I do like the way this car looks menacing and aggressive, even in stock form. Then returning to the side profile, you are going to receive color match side mirror caps with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety and convenience. Then as you make your way around to the back, once again, just like up front, Nothing different here at all. You will still have that subtle deck lid spoiler for the trunk, which I would like to see Subaru give us an option from the factory where you have a car that looks more like the STI. Obviously, that's asking a bit too much and might be a bit blasphemous for the WRX nameplate, but it still would be cool to see in 2024. You're still gonna have the same taillight design here with incandescent turn signals. And then for the lower portion of the rear bumper, the quad exhaust tips and the aggressive cladding, which I think goes really well with this white paint color we have here on our model today. I do think though that from a holistic standpoint, those 19 inch wheels and those Brembos definitely changed up the exterior design of this car quite a bit. Now taking a quick peek under the hood for the 2024 Subaru WRX TR, you are going to receive the same 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer four cylinder engine producing 271 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. And with this trim, you only get that six speed manual. Now, just like you, I do wish that Subaru gave us a bit more of a horsepower increase here for this trim. It would better set this trim apart from other models in the lineup, such as the base premium and limited. And I do think it would go hand in hand with what you have here in regards to the revisions to the chassis, platform, suspension, and of course a new braking system for this model. Now, in regards to fuel economy though, you're looking at right around 19 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. 
doesn't seem all that economical. But being a WRX owner myself, if you drive conservatively, you're not going 10 tenths all the time, you could definitely get 25 miles per gallon combined and on the highway close to 29 miles per gallon. So it's not as much of a gas guzzler as you would think. Better yet, you do receive super symmetrical all-wheel drive, that comes standard, and makes this car very competitive against the Honda Civic Type R and maybe even the Volkswagen Golf R, which is a bit more expensive than what we have here with this model. Now, I know some of you will be saying, well, what about the GR Corolla? The GR Corolla is still a bit rare to find right now. There's not a lot of them on inventory. So if you are somebody looking at buying a car at around MSRP and you live near a Subaru dealership, you can easily get your hands on one of these without question. So I think the TR is still a great value right now in regards to performance and what this generation is offering. Hopping inside the TR, you're greeted by, that is right, the Recaros, which completely changes up the driving environment for this sedan, at least for those who own a WRX with the six-speed manual, because you could only get the Recaros with the GT, which left a lot of us bewildered. We didn't know why they only offered the Recaros for the top trim that only came with a CVT. But for 2024, thankfully, we have a trim that gives us these seats that are very aggressive. They provide a lot of bolstering and support. And because you have the ultra suede trim, there's a lot of grip as well. So you won't be swinging around too much on a winding back road or when you are accelerating and having a lot of fun on a on or off ramp. These are actually very comfortable seats. So it's still daily drivable. It's still a comfortable sports sedan that I think a lot of you are definitely going to love and appreciate at around $42,000. For the rest of the interior though, not much is really different here compared to other trims in the lineup. Now, a lot of you will be pointing out the other suede trim panels on the dashboard, but these are offered on Subaru's website. You can just buy them and install them yourself. So if you like that touch inside your WRX, you can save $6,000 or $7,000, buy a premium, and then get these panels and just put them on in your garage. So that would be a pretty good value in my opinion. The Ultra Suede trim also makes its way on the door panels as well, giving you some extra padding. And we see this across the Subaru lineup where once you get higher up in the trim levels, past the premium, you're gonna have some more creature comforts and higher quality materials. And you have that here with the TR. And I think it does go a long way, especially with this car being sports car oriented and just being dynamic and enthusiast focused at the end of the day. In front of you will be analog gauges with a small information display in the center. And by using the buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, you can scroll through a variety of information, which is pretty much identical to what you had for 22 and 23. The only difference here is that you do get traffic sign recognition. So that is a nice little addition here for this display. On the right side of the steering wheel will be the buttons for your adaptive cruise control settings and lane centering. So you will have eyesight driver assist technologies here for the TR. That is standard across all trims for 2024. Whereas for the 22 and 23 models, it was only available on WRXs with the CVT. Now you're still gonna have the same exact steering wheel here. I wish Subaru would give us an Alcantara steering wheel or a higher quality leather steering wheel, which would go really well with what the TR is offering and all about. But obviously this is still a car under $50,000. I'm not expecting all the bells and whistles here for this model. Then taking a look at the infotainment system, you are going to receive the 11.6 inch touchscreen. Now with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. Now, new for the 24 models, because you didn't get this for 22 and 23, you now have a USB-A and USB-C outlet. So dual functionality in regards to charging up your phone, that's really nice to see. Also, you will have dual zone climate control and heated front seats. Everything else is pretty much the exact same here. So I'm not gonna be redundant or go over everything else we've already checked out with the 2024 base, because you still will have valet mode, also you can add new shortcuts. And the only difference here is that you do get onboard navigation, but because you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you could just use Google Maps and Waze. Now, some of you might be disappointed with the fact that with the TR, with this being a higher trim, you don't get any other camera angles when you do put this car in reverse. So you still have that rear backup camera with trajectory, but nothing different compared to what you're gonna find in a base trim or above. Then as you make your way down towards the center console, you will have a nice cubby and storage compartment for a smartphone or a wallet. For the center console itself, on the outskirts of the center console will be some padding. So that way when you are resting your leg, It'll give you some comfort there. Also, you have your six-speed manual transmission here with your gear shifter. And since this is at Subaru of Wakefield, they install the STI short throw shifter for all their models. So that will give you a lot more pleasure when upshifting and downshifting. You will have two cup holders, which are oddly shaped. I don't think you'll be fitting any cups here. I don't 
put any drinks in my WRX. I'm too afraid of them spilling on my cloth seats. You also have a center storage compartment with enough room for a couple smartphones, maybe a couple small gadgets. Then to wrap up the front seating area, above you are not going to receive a power moonroof that is only available on the premium, limited, and GT. It's not really necessary, and on my premium, I don't have it equipped. I don't miss it at all, so I think you'll be just fine with what the TR is offering. Then for passengers, in the back, the ultra suede trim seats do work wonders. Obviously, they're not as aggressively bolstered as what you're going to find up front, but if you are on a spirited drive and you have your friends tagging along with you, they won't be swinging around too much in these seats. So everyone should be comfortable in this car. Also, nothing's different here in regards to interior dimensions for legroom, shoulder room, and headroom, especially without the power moonroof. So I do think you can have tall passengers sit back here on a daily basis. Also, legroom is definitely competitive with the Honda Civic Si, Volkswagen GLI, and Volkswagen GTI. Now, also back here with the TR, you are going to receive a USB-C and USB-A outlet. However, you don't get heated outboard seats. Is that a make or break deal? Absolutely not, but I just wanted to point that out for you guys if you are looking at buying a WRX this year, and more specifically, the TR. Then take a quick look at the rear cargo area for those of you who are concerned about practicality. With the TR, you are going to receive 12 and a half cubic feet of room behind the second row of seats. Being a WRX owner myself, I can definitely say for certain that you can go on a road trip with some friends or family. You could easily fit probably eight or nine bags of luggage back here because it is deceptively wide. Obviously, you can lower the second row of seats to maximize cargo capacity, and I still think this is a solid daily driver, despite the fact you can cross shop this with some hatchbacks in this market and price range. Now, you're not going to receive a spare tire, which is not too much of a surprise if you are familiar with the VB generation, but I would like to see that be integrated in the near future. So having been behind the wheel of the Subaru WRX for about 30 minutes now, I want to give my impressions and my takes on this car as a WRX owner, because as a journalist, I'm going to say that this is most certainly worth $6,000 over premium or $3,000 over a limited. But as a WRX owner, I'm not quite sold, not at $42,000. Now, is this a better value than what you have with the GR Corolla, Honda Civic Type R, and Golf R? Yes, I think it is, especially when you take a look at what Honda dealerships are doing with the markup. You're spending $10,000 over sticker for a Civic Type R. That is just ridiculous and ludicrous, to be honest, spending over fifty grand for that. But as a WRX owner, if you have driven a premium or limited, I have to say, the changes that Subaru did make for this trim specifically, I don't think are enough. This is far from being an STI. Now, with the Brembo brakes, yes, there's more engagement, there's more feedback, but there's still a lot of travel with these brake pads and rotors. I'm not noticing a significant difference in the braking of this car. Everything else is different. The steering input, the handling, the suspension. This car feels more track focused and more back road oriented. A, a car that you could have a lot of fun and maybe get yourself into a lot of trouble. The brakes, though, still leave a lot more to be desired. Now, with the 19-inch wheels, they do create a lot more road noise. Now, it could be because of the Bridgestones, too. I put Michelins on my WRX, and they're a lot quieter than what I have right now with this car. So definitely keep that in mind, that with the larger tire size, with the larger wheels, a lot more of that road noise is going to enter the cabin. Also, because you have the exact same powertrain and Subaru didn't retune this engine, it's not going to be any quicker than what you have with a standard WRX. But as we approach some off-ramps here, this is where the TR really sets itself apart from the other trims for 2024. So as we enter this on-ramp here, I will say that I feel so much more connected to the road than in my WRX. Unfortunately, this person's got to ruin this entire experience. The first thing I noticed when I got the keys to this TR is that the steering was significantly heavier. And Subaru tends to leave a lot more to be desired with their steering columns, where you don't get much feedback, the steering is vague, 
there's not much weight. For the TR, it's a completely different experience. Now, Subaru didn't mention this in their press release, but I do notice with the TR that when upshifting and downshifting, it's a bit more notchy than it was in the past, which gives you a lot more engagement. Now, as we enter the corner here, it just hugs the road. There's not a lot of body roll, and you can really enjoy yourself on a winding back road. I wish I had this car a couple weeks ago on my fall foliage cruise with some friends out in Western Mass and in Vermont and upstate New York, because this would have been a blast to drive. On the brakes, they're strong, but there's just no grab to them. It's a linear brake feel. And we'll do this loop one more time. Like in most cars in this market, when you get on the brakes, there's that grab, it holds. You don't get that with the TR. And having driven a lot of cars in this market, I can tell you that these brakes still leave a bit more to be desired. Yes, they're stronger than what you're going to find in a premium or limited, but they're hardly comparable to what I have in the GTI. But what Subaru has done to the dampers and the suspension by stiffening it by about 5 to 10 percent, it does make a world of a difference. And by retuning the steering column and steering rack, it's far more responsive. It's more communicative. And everything just seems to come together much better when you are on those winding back roads, in those tight twists and bends that isn't there in a standard WRX. But it's so capable in the corners. All in all, what Subaru has here with the TR is a far more capable sedan as a back road canyon carver, maybe even a track toy. But at $42,000, and it could just be because I put this car on a pedestal, I just don't know if I would have gone in this direction compared to a premium. Now obviously the Recaros do help out. We're in those sharp twists and bends. You're not swaying around at all. These seats hug you, they keep you in place. And that really helps out with the overall driving experience, which again, I wish I had a couple of weeks ago. But the leap from $35,000 to $42,000 that's still a pretty sizable gap. And I think that if you are looking at buying a Subaru WRX, you like the TR. Maybe you're someone who doesn't live in the city. You have winding back roads right outside your door. And you're somebody who maybe tracks your car quite a bit, especially if you go autocrossing, go with the TR. If you're looking for a fun daily driver, you have no real intentions of pushing the car to its limits, going seven, eight, or nine tenths all the time. Stick with a premium or limited. But for those of you who do wanna feel a full connection to the overall driving experience, a car that still feels analog, despite the fact you have the iSight driver assist technologies and 11.6 inch touchscreen, then go with the TR. Also, because of the pricing in this market, because of the GR Corolla prices, the Honda Civic Type R, Volkswagen Golf R, this is still a great value. But I just think that from Subaru, at 42 grand, not so much. I think you can get a lot more value out of a Limited. Now, I would like to see what a TS has to offer with the adaptive dampers, because I think that changes up the whole driving experience. You now have a car that's extremely competitive in this market. For the TR, it's priced reasonably. I just think that 
for a car at $42,000, Subaru should have retuned this engine. And also, I think with the brakes, they should be a little bit stronger. But those are just my two cons with the TR. This is still a fantastic daily driver. This is still a fantastic sedan built on a very rigid chassis that I know a lot of you are definitely going to love. I think also for you WRX owners out there that own a VB, this is a minimal upgrade over a premium or a limited. I think though that for someone who currently owns a WRX, hold that just a little bit longer for the TS. If you're hopping into this generation and platform for the first time, you've never owned a WRX, that's where I'd say just go with the TR. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review for the 2024 Subaru WRX TR. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time.